Hi, welcome and welcome back to Noggin Comics. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. As you can tell, he's not Nora. <laughs> um, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, name's Kang Zhang, but if you've seen the movie Shang-Chi, he tells people how to pronounce his name. So my name is pronounced Gang Shong. <laughs> but I'm used to Kang Zhang too. <laughs> I've been a friend of Kyle's since high school. We go probably middle school, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's like, like 17 years. 17 years, yeah. yeah. And the pandemic happened, so we haven't seen each other since the beginning of the pandemic. But yeah, he knew how excited I was to see the movie Shang-Chi and to show my little nephews. And Yeah, I, I thought that bringing you on would be perfect right now to especially, especially talk about the importance of Shang-Chi to the Asian American community as well as culture in general. Mm -hmm. So um, let's get going. Let's talk about your uh, journey. How'd you get into comics or the comic movies? Like, what was the beginning? Okay, so just to backtrack a little bit to what uh, you were saying, um, I so I don't want to represent the entire Asian community, but this is like a, a like a part of the Asian community. So like, I'm not talking for all Asians. But like this could, this is like a part of like a, an Asian perspective, because um, you know, it we have a lot. We're all unique, right? So we all have different experiences. But yeah, uh, so to your question, um, growing up, like my parents, we didn't really have a lot of money, so I I, I don't really have like a, a background to like reading comic books. Um, whatever I could get my hands on, like for free, that's what I would get on. But uh, as a kid. I watched a lot of Marvel um, animated TV shows as well as DC animated TV shows. Um, we all know that, uh, Kyle and I used to talk about this a lot, um, Saturday morning cartoon shows, I would get I'm up. I'm still watching delay. Oh, you still do? <laughs> do? It's still going on? No, uh, Disney Plus, man. Oh, it's all on Disney Plus? Oh, okay, gotcha. HBO Max has got BTAS. That's right. Um, is, is there such a thing as TV anymore, though? Like, TV shows? Uh... It's all like streaming services now. <laughs> well, it's funny you just say that because as of today, the new Batman animated series is being shown on Ka Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network? Okay, yeah, so, so like cable and... But I yeah. have a Roku at home um, I, and I barely use that. It's for football. <laughs> yeah, the only time I use that is to watch football. <laughs> um, but yeah, where was I? What was the question? <laughs> oh, like so you're talking about how as a kid you would watch like, the animated shows. And, yeah, like, I watched the animated show. That's how I got started and um, I just like was in love with that world. Is, I mean, a lot of people will say like it's, it's awesome. It's amazing, well, inspirational. Honestly, going off that Spider-Man the Anime series, X-Men, and the DC side, you have Superman and Batman. Those are great introductions to the comic mm -hmm. books. I mean, at, at, we almost had the same journey. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up reading comics until, mm -hmm. shit, you, you knew me, and I wasn't reading comics. Yeah, well, you had some. I had some, but yeah. like, I wasn't deep into it like right. that. Right, so. you were like... Now you're like hardcore. I'm 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 still like like softcore with the comics. <laughs> so, you get the trade like you pick up a trade, but you don't pick up back issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like and like you were saying, like starting out was like X Men, Spider Man, Batman, Superman. That was like Justice League, Justice yeah, League, like, Avengers. That's like the the main pillars of like the late nineties. Yeah, and yeah. that's like what opened the door. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so, all right, well, going off that. Who was your favorite superhero or comic book character then? Yeah, I think uh, growing up, it was definitely, I mean, I'm very basic. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't get too deep into the, the reading, so I, all of the obscure like comic book characters I, I didn't really know about yet until I got older, but Spider-Man for sure was my number one. I think he's still my number one. He's so awesome. You know, he's, he's like, uh, the reason why he's my number one is because, um, Stan Lee did such a good job of making him like an underdog character, a uh, nerdy kid. And then, um, you know, all of us nerds have this fantasy of like turning our world the other way. And that's exactly what happened with Peter Parker. He totally flipped his world. Instead of being picked on. Instead of being picked on. Yeah. But then he stayed humble and he was cool about it. He didn't turn into a bully himself. So Spider-Man was for sure my... I, he still is my number one. I can't wait for the new movie to come mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Well... I've been seeing a lot of people after watching this film, after watching Shang Chi, are saying like he may become their favorite character in the MCU, especially on Twitter. Like it is going nuts on Twitter right now. 
I don't know if you've been on it recently. I have a Twitter, but I don't really go on Twitter. So, yeah, the acrylic, not really acrylics, but MCU fans and people in the community are like, Shang-Chi could be the new MCU character that we all get behind. Wow, yes. That's so, so cool to hear, especially as an Asian American here. So, like, going off of that, uh, before we dive into how, you know, the, sh the movie itself, you know, what we thought and mm -hmm. how we feel like it could impact culture, uh, what's your experience with the character? I mean, we, did, did you read anything before this? Or, like, I, I did some research before this, before we talked, mm -hmm. did some uh, research, and the dude never been in an animated show. Mm -hmm. So, wow. what was your, okay. what was your history with the character? Honestly, I had no idea who Shang-Chi was. Um, my history with him was uh, when the first Avengers movies came out. Uh, movie came out, not movies, but the first Avenger movie came out. I was like, and that was, what was that like 2012, that 2011, 2010? 2010? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's when I started to to like dive into uh, my research. Where I was like, it would be so cool if they had uh, an Asian guy up there with them. Mm -hmm. And so I did, you know, my little research, and I was like, I found out about Shang Chi, and uh, and I've, obviously I called him Shang Chi, mm -hmm. but then now I know it's Shang Chi, and. Uh, I was like, yeah, it would be so cool to have an Asian face up there with all those awesome characters. Um, yeah, that's how I found out about Shang-Chi. Yeah. Well, to give you a little uh, more excitement, uh, you know how Jimmy Woo is in Ant-Man the Wasp and Found the Vision, right? Yeah. So he leads a team called Agents of Atlas, which is all Asian Pacific Islander characters. Wow. So, and they're talking potentially of bringing them into the MCU. Really? So, yeah. and. Over there is an Agents of Atlas book over there. Or actually, here. So, oh, yeah, I yeah. see it, yeah. yeah. But, uh, so obviously if you haven't read the book, you haven't read much, and, you know, doing the Avengers research, you really don't know much about the creation of the character, do you? Mm, no, I, oh, actually, I recently, a few years ago, when I found out that uh, Simu Liu was cast to play him, um, I kind of thought about some of the villains that I that I discovered when I researched uh, Shang-Chi back in 2010. Um, and I was like, wow, this villain was, it's kind of like a racist caricature. Do you want uh, to say Fu, Fu Manchu, okay. yeah. And um, I'm glad they did the whole switch up and they they had Des Destin do the directing. I forgot who the writer was. Do you remember who the writer was for the movie? Oh, um we could probably pull it down in okay, the little, yeah. <laughs> in the little section down there. Get done. But I, I want to say they did their homework and they got rid of all of that stuff. Um, you could so, also say Kevin Feige. Feige. Kevin Feige, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the president. He, it was, well, and the thing is, like, they switched up the entire origin story of mm -hmm. Shang-Chi. Um, because they went from the part that Fu Manchu was, you know, his dad. His dad trained. But, they, you know, they kept that whole yeah. training in the, in the movie. But then turning him into the Mandarin, his dad into the Mandarin, mm -hmm. that is not in the comics. That's right. So, yeah. um, but the thing is though, I, I don't know if when I sent you the questions, I don't know if I added this part, but uh, Stan Lee wanted to make a movie in the early 90s. Shang-Chi? Yeah, he wanted to make a Shang-Chi oh, wow. film. And an actor that you and I both like was going to play him, Brandon Lee. Oh, was going to play oh my gosh! For after, real? after the crow, but after, after the passing of uh, Brandon Lee, Marvel shelved it. Marvel's like, no. well, not Marvel. I think at that time it could have been Fox or Sony that had the rights. But okay, dude, that that would have been so awesome. And uh, back to the history of Shang Chi, like, wasn't he created uh, based off of Bruce Lee? He was created off of Bruce Lee and the success of the show Kung Fu with David Carradine. Oh, okay. Uh, because Kung Fu was like the biggest show at that time. Dang. And um, the creator, uh, Steve, Steve Englehart, he wanted to create a character in comics that could represent that. So Marvel tried getting the rights to Kung Fu. They couldn't get the rights, so he's like, screw it, I'm going to make a character. So he makes Shang-Chi, and that was that. So, But if you realize, when you look into the old comics, his skin color is almost orange. Yeah. And it was, it was very racist. Yeah. And, but that you know, you gotta look at that time period too. Like we didn't, we didn't look at it in such a cultural lens too. Mm -hmm. 
So, like, this is all in black and white, and I'm glad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there are so many videos on YouTube that go through the dark history of Shang-Chi because it's one of those characters, even in comic books, like, after uh, Master of Kung Fu and the Deadly Hands, don't see much of the character. Like, the last 20, 30 years, the character's been very minimal. Okay. So it was just recently that book over there that just came out. Yeah. This one right here. Oh, right so, there. Yeah. Okay. Right in front of this. Um, so, okay, let's dive into it. Let's dive into what your reaction was. All right. So, my partner and I, we got super lucky. Um, we got to go see a special screening a month before the actual release. Um, and I just fell in love with it, and so did she. And what I was hoping for uh, is for it to be like as big as Black Panther was for the black community. Um, and it's still early. I don't know if it's going to be as big, um, but apparently it's blowing up on Twitter. So well, yeah, because um, a lot of people like a lot of people did get special premieres or they attended the premiere of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but they made 8.8 8 million just last night. Really? Is that good? Is that uh, good? <laughs> so for the pandemic wise, that's great. Okay. Um, when you compare it to Black Widow, Black Widow made 13. The first night? The first night. Okay. Um, but you also got to take consideration because when that came out, I mean, we were in that down of COVID. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold up. T tonight is the, 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 the last the, night was. Oh, last night was. Today's the fourth. Yep. Yes. Today is the fourth. Okay. Third. Third. Today's the third. Yeah. Okay. So third day, they, so we saw it last night. Yeah. And they they have it Thursday at six now. It used to be at midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's yeah. six p.m. So. Okay. Uh, and the seat was packed. I'm like, there was maybe eight seats available. Nice. So. That's that's a good sign. But yeah, I, I uh, back to your question. I I completely fell in love with it. Uh, beautiful. Um, the whole like the beginning scene. I, I mean, I don't want this to be as kind of spoil it or no um, I won't, okay never mind I don't, I don't want to spoil we it we could like we could talk about some spoilers and like make a different video and oh okay it. well for, for the purpose of this I, I, I mean yeah I'm, I don't want to spoil it yet uh, maybe I'll spoil it another day or yeah whatever I was just, never yeah or never <laughs> so. but yeah the movie was beautiful like I I got like my eyes I didn't bawl like I didn't cry but like my eyes got watery like I was just watching it and um uh, they had um, kind of the fighting style of like uh, uh, Grouchy Grouchy Tiger, Tiger, Hidden Dragon uh, with Chow Young Fat and Michelle Ye Michelle Yeoh was in that movie. And then um, it also reminded me of uh, Hero with Jet Li. And that was another mm -hmm. uh, classic like Eastern Chinese movie with like, they have those like, it's pretty, the, the martial arts, I, I, it, there's a style they call it, I don't remember what they call it, but it's, they're pretty much gliding through the air and it's mm -hmm. like, it's like a dance, it's, it's gorgeous. Going off that, uh, gorgeous, when his dad and his mom meet, that scene is shot so beautifully. Oh my, yeah. Like, and you do get emotional because they're, they're, yeah. It's almost like they're dancing or fighting and almost making love all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so. exactly what Kyle was saying. Like, I've, that's why I got my eyes got so watery. I'm like, this is gorgeous. And to have it at, at the, like, production level of, like, Disney, Marvel, you know, the, to have all that money put into it made it even more gorgeous. Like, I mean, Grouchy Tiger, Hidden Dragon was beautiful, too, but, like... Um, this was also gorgeous. Like I was like, holy crap! Like I made a, like a Facebook post about. It. I was like, Destin did his did his freaking homework on this. Like it, it was it was amazing. So I don't know if you saw this. Um, you've seen it twice now, right? Yep, twice now. You saw it yesterday with your nephews. Yeah, yep. Um, so when we first when we first go into Shang Chi's bedroom, he actually has Kung Fu Hustle hanging up. On yes, the wall. I noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> and the Stankyonia from Outcast that uh -huh. album. I'm like. Dude, I can't wait to show you growing up. Dude, like, I, I was kind of freaking out the first night that I went to go watch it with my partner because I, I was like, babe, look, look, look. Like, I was, like, geeking out. Mm -hmm. I was like, Kung Fu House on the wall. And she's just kind of like, what? Where? What? And she loves Kung Fu House, too. Like, that, that was... I have that been trying cool. to get Nora to watch Kung Fu House for years. You know what I'm thinking? With, um, you know that, that uh, Arrow guy in Talo, mm -hmm. the old dude? Yep. I'm wondering if he was in Kung Fu Hustle. Like, he, uh, he played one of the landlords, like, with the lady that had cigarette and the, uh, um, 
the the cousin there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then like he was her husband, and I think. There you go. Anyway, IMDb to the rest. Yeah, right? I'm wondering if the the old man with the arrow was the was in Kung Fu Hustle, because then. So why don't I look that up? Yeah. How'd you feel about his dad? I thought that his dad was probably the most complex villain that we had in the solar film next to Winter Soldier, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually I didn't see it going this route. I thought his dad was just straight up like evil, like going into the movie, like yeah, he was, just but... just a total like bad guy who was who was like badass cause the cause of the trailer and the ten rings. Um uh, but then they like put some layers to him where he wasn't like well he was evil at the beginning but then he like love kind of um stopped him from going full villain and then they took that turn where i didn't see it coming at all like it's 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 like a tragedy you know it's it's like his love drove him um mad uh, that's how i saw it yeah my girlfriend she didn't see it that way she said that uh love didn't drive mad the rings drove him mad and i was like yeah but then you know the with the mega sucker they call it <laughs> oh i don't want to spoil anything but yeah it it was crazy it's it's i didn't see them going this route with um win mm -hmm. at all and well and is this if i recall correctly what's his name again tony tony leon tony yeah. leon is this his first american film i believe so yeah because like honestly the dude the acting in this film was superb too. Mm -hmm. uh, I know when we were watching it, Nora loved Aquafina. Mm -hmm. That's Katie. Oh yeah, Aquafina. It, I think it's between Aquafina and Tony Young that, mm -hmm. to me, kind of stole the movie away from Simu Liu. Simu Liu is he was, awesome. He is Shang Chi. Yeah, yeah. He is Shang Chi. He's awesome. He's perfect for the role. But like Aquafina killed it. Uh, Tony Leung, Wen Wu, the the Mandarin, he killed it. Like. Uh, he yeah, is one of my favorite Marvel villains right now. It was, it's between, I know you say the Winter Soldier and uh, um, Wen Wu. I think it's between like Thanos, Wen Wu, and Killmonger. Oh yeah, I mean kill, yeah. Now that you yeah. mentioned Killmonger, um, yeah. I think that's who reminds me of the most actually, mm -hmm. the complexity. Yeah. Um, the only reason I didn't bring uh, Thanos into it is because Thanos is that big, huge, you know, the team villain. Oh. Okay. Where this is like, this is honestly probably the best solo origin film that marvel's has is iron man yeah i I'd, I'd have to agree I, it's top. it's my top like top three marvel movies right now and obviously a little bias because he is asian but like even without the bias like well i mean going off that too nora loves black willow and that's one of her top marvel films now. nice and she's been straight honest with me she goes it's because of the whole female being able to relate to that mm -hmm. you know film storyline wasn't it like the second one the only, like the second movie with a female lead in, Marvel. in Marvel in the MCU. Yeah, Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel was, Marvel was the first one, so it's a little bit slow, but at least they're doing it. They're starting to do it, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. and one thing I did like about Shang Chi too is like it actually continues the Marvel story too. It's like you have this origin story, but it's also advancing the overall story as an arc too. Mm -hmm. Especially if you stay, you gotta stay to watch the last two. Yes, and yes, for sure. Like the first, the first mid credit scene. Yeah. The, the last one was really cool, too, but, like... Oh, we're not going to spoil it, but I yeah. do think that's going to lead to a show. Oh, you think so? I think the, the way that it's filmed and the way that they announce it, I can't I can't see it being in a sh movie mm -hmm. as much as a Disney Plus show. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean... I love that character, too. Yeah, that character. She was badass, yeah. And I was, I was, I mean, doing some research, this is one of her first American films, too. Oh, it is? Okay. And I thought she was great as well. Like, yeah, she could seriously carry mm -hmm. a show or a movie. Yeah, and especially in the route that they're taking it, I'm like, yeah, I could totally see that yeah. being something that we enjoy too. But if you do read the comic books, if you haven't keeping that buzz on Shang Chi, kind of know that's what, how it's going though too. Okay. So. Okay. Well, this this question kind of goes into what we've been talking about, and we mentioned that I made eight point eight million already. Mm -hmm. In your eyes, how do you think this film's gonna be looked at currently and in the future? Like, how well do you think it's gonna be received? I think right now, it's what we need, especially for the Asian community, uh, with all the Asian hate crimes. And, you know, f I mean, for all of, like, Asian history, this is what we need. We need it. Like, we, we've never had anything like this. And um, 
I talked about it um you know on my Facebook post um like my nephews they're growing up um kind of idolizing and worshiping the same Asian role models that I grew up with and then my dad grew up with and then my grandpa grew up with so there's very few Asian representation that um positive Asian representation that on in the media um that my little nephews can can um you know look up to so with Shang-Chi coming out um I know he's just one so far but he is a new one that is different from uh how am I how am I how do I want to word this okay so what I'm trying to say is that they now have someone new uh, a new Asian role model to look up to uh, other than the ones that I grew up with, my grandpa grew up with, and my dad grew up with, which is huge. You could say that, just going off of the, the role models that you guys had, that the community had, also influenced Shang-Chi, though. They did, yeah. So, you basically, was your nephews and you know, even you mm -hmm. now have someone to look up to in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that's always been dominated by one type of culture. Yeah. And now recently, they were expanding... The films are getting better, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I mean, mm -hmm. you mentioned Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And even Nora made that comment after getting on the movie. So she's like, this has a Black Panther feel to it. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. It, it was almost like a sequel, but like Asian sequel. <laughs> you can see the influence of Black Panther. Yeah, I'm so glad Black Panther happened because if Black Panther didn't happen, I don't think we would have gotten Shang-Chi. The success so, of Black Panther. Yeah. I think it goes, well, the thing is, though, is that when Marvel Studios opened up, Shang-Chi was on that core of being one of the first characters they touched. Mm -hmm. It was the, him and Power Pack and um, Cloak and Dagger ended up getting scrapped mm -hmm. with the original core. So you got you know, your, your Captain America, your Hawk, your um, Iron Man. Mm -hmm. but, All white guys. <laughs> yeah, but I also think that is still box office and unfortunately U.S. as a whole tends to go after the white characters. Yeah. I mean, the last half draws. I hate to say this, but I get it. Money does play a big role. And they don't want to take that risk. But look what happens when they take that risk. Look what happens. Better late than never. <laughs> so, yeah, and then going off the two, I mean, I think these questions kind of all in a line. Yeah. Um, where do you want the MC to go from here? For Shang-Chi? For Shang-Chi, or in general, I mean... You, you, we, we know the uh, characters are becoming more diverse. There's more characters coming out. Is there? Do you want Shang Chi to be one of the main pillars of the MCU? I think he has to now, right? With how the, with how the movie ended, I think he has to be a big. I mean, it, Kevin Feige wouldn't just make a solo movie and not make him be like a a big player in the MCU, right? Um, well, but I do. I would love for him to be as big play as big a role as the other guys too do you so do you think and i, I hate to bring this up because you know we all love chadwick boseman mm -hmm. oh, what's the yeah. passing of black panther do you think that will end up making shang chi fill that void oh, no i i that's if that's what they're going with i don't want to see that because yeah. um dude chadwick boseman was a king like chadwick boseman was <laughs> was a king child. no but but yeah. but like he he was awesome. I don't I don't think it's it's usually a bad route if they try to fill someone's like role. Mm -hmm. Like you know we're talking about Shang Chi, right? Like uh, let's go back to like the the sixties and seventies when when Bruce Lee died mm -hmm. um, in Asia. They tried to fill his his shoes, and they came up with all these uh, Bruce Lee um, lookalikes, knockoffs, and, knockoffs and imitation, and and it was just like garbage mm -hmm. and i remember watching it as a kid and i'm not from the 70s but <laughs> no but but like i remember watching those movies growing up and and like seeing all all of bruce lee's movies and then watching a movie with this guy who was trying to be bruce lee and i was like what the heck is this mm -hmm. this guy sucks like so anyway back just trying to relate that's it to still, that's still yeah. because in this book right here in this giant omnibus bruce lee's a character in it Oh, Bruce Lee is actually in there? Bruce Lee is actually in those books. Oh, crap. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> I know I should have mentioned that earlier, but yeah, you got Iron Fist, and I do kind of feel like I'm glad Iron Fist got the Netflix treatment, because 
Yeah, granted, they, they could have done so much with that character, but what mm -hmm. they did with Shang Chi in a blockbuster, mm -hmm. I don't think they could have done with the Netflix or Disney Plus show. Yeah, and I, I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of Iron Fist, but no I like I like the character a lot. Danny Rand. Yeah, so. I like the character. I don't. I didn't think he had a fair shake at it. Um, the actor or the the actor, the character. I think the character. I thought it was going to be a, like a really good opportunity for them to reintroduce Iron Fist. Into Sh in Shang Chi, mm -hmm. there's a scene in there um, that I thought I was like, "Oh, this is it." You're talking about later in the film. Later in the film. Yeah, it's gonna be talking about. Yeah, but then it's not really the group that trains him. It's mm -hmm. it's another group. But I was like, "Wait!" But I was like, "No, that can't be it." So I do kind of want to get into some spoilers here. Okay. Um, yeah. Tar Lao. Ta yeah, Talo. I, I mean, we're both probably pronouncing it, mispronouncing it, but yeah. I when when you discover that, let's just say, call it like the hidden village almost. Mm -hmm. It reminded me so much of when you dove into Wakanda for the uh, first time. Oh yeah, yeah. And you saw all those creatures. Mm -hmm. I I didn't expect that to happen. I did not expect to have a mystical feel. Cause I feel, feel like you had a typical kung fu movie at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then it dives into mystical fantasy towards the end. Yeah, oh my gosh. So and I didn't see it going that route. Yeah, either. and I, I just yeah. feel like, and I almost felt like that is why the comparisons to Black Panther do happen for us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I I won't say it's as good as Black Panther because that that movie from I mean, granted there was some special effects issues, but I don't know if you've watched our top. We did a top five pick on the exchange. And Black Panther, I'm on my list of the top five MCU. Nice. Movies. Dude, Black Panther is one of my favorites here. Yeah. And I just, I honestly, I do think Shang-Chi could be a top five contender, though. Yeah. I Because your reaction to it is different than mine, but yeah, mm -hmm. I still love the film. Yeah, that's so. huge, right? That means the movie is doing something, right? Like, for the Asian community, it's, it's oh my gosh, it's, it's like, wow, this is... This is the shit. Like this is awesome. We finally have someone awesome. Um, yeah, and then Takayo, who's a friend of the community, he thinks it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, a friend to the community. <laughs> yeah, an ally, a friend, so, whatever we call well, it these days. No, it's like the thing is, like, ever since you've known me, we've always been like, we've always talked about culture. Yeah, and we so, we geek out about yeah. stuff like this too, so, and we yeah. But um, any last things you want to talk about about Shang Chi, like? The music? I thought the music was great. Oh yeah, the soundtrack? Yeah. Amazing. The oh, score or whatever you yeah. want to call it? That just adds to the movie. Like. So, in, uh, you mentioned Aquafina, And I'm actually really happy what they're doing with the character Katie. Because I, I really don't know Katie. Uh, I don't know if Katie was created for the movie or not. Yeah, uh, you probably but, know more than me. <laughs> um, the way that they're going to you know, push her into the MCU, I think is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, we, we like I said, we're trying not to spoil as much, but you kind of realize that the character is going to be important in that mid credit scene. Yep. They did say that you know someone awesome, another cool character, was like, "Yo, your life's gonna change." Blah blah blah. In one of the most funniest things in the movie. Too. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's... Well, that's another thing about Shang Chi. The humor is spot on. Yes, Aquafina and Simu Liu. Chemistry, amazing. Probably one of the best chemistries I've seen in a Marvel cinematic movie. Yeah, in my opinion, I haven't seen a, a, a like like two actors coming together. You could say that. And Chris, make, Chris Evans and Scott Johansson had that chemistry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Although, then again, they've acted in so many so many films together. That when you, you wrote together for so long, I mean, yeah. look at you, you. We haven't talked in almost a year, mm -hmm. and it's like, hey, we saw yesterday, yeah. basically. So yeah, so that their friendship, um, seemingly you and Aquafina's friendship in there is like, it felt real. Mm -hmm. To me, it did, and they just bounce it off each other like it's natural. Well, like, like they've been friends forever. Have you ever seen the uh, Aquafina's Norris from Cream? 
Yes, I love that show. <laughs> you, do you know what uh, Simu Liu is actually in that? Yeah, I, I, I watched the whole uh, first season during mm. the pandemic and he was Garbage Boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now he's Bus Boy. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, that scene was funny too. Yeah. But... Ronnie Chiang's, uh, Ra uh, Ronnie Chiang, or um, Ronnie, I'm just calling Ronnie. Him. Yeah, Ronnie, Australian Asian actor. Oh, he comedian. was hilarious. Yeah. He was awesome in there for his little, like. He felt like he was there for five minutes. Yeah, he yeah. was good. <laughs> oh, dude. They do. do bring him back, actually. What's that? They do bring him back. Ronnie? Yeah, yeah. at the end. Yep. They brought him back. Another surprise character in there. Well, it wasn't really a surprise for me because I was hoping that he would be in there. It was um, um, Ben Kingsley's uh, character. Trevor? Trevor. So. He was and definitely a highlight of the movie, too. <laughs> well, I do feel like if, you, if you're if you keeping track of Shang-Chi, you kind of knew he was in the movie. Yep. Uh, cause, or at least hoping that well, he shows up. Cause they, they, she yeah. show, he showed up at the red carpet for the premiere. Yep. And also, All Hair of the King at Disney Plus just got released a week ago. Mm -hmm. That shows that the Mandarin, because mm -hmm. at that time we didn't know who the Mandarin was, Yeah. was yeah. breaking them out of jail yeah. or prison. But they redeemed his character, I thought. Yeah, Trevor, Trevor Slattery, I think that's his yep. whole name. He's such a funny character. I hope he like pops up here and there again, especially for Shang-Chi movies. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, and I know they're going to make more Shang-Chi movies because... This one was fucking Ooh. epic. <laughs> Honestly, like if they could, if they did it, Agents of Atlas, uh, that would be a great way to have Shang Chi be a part of it. It's just the problem with Shang Chi in another film, villain. He doesn't have that many great villains. Yeah, how would they? Like, who would be? Who would be the next villain in the second movie? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, the ending, the mid credit scene. Sorry, <clears throat> saliva went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> It's not COVID. It's not COVID. <laughs> the thing is, the mid credit scene, right? I don't know who, we, like, where it's going with that. And that that is typical MCU. It doesn't really. Yeah. Because if you if you remember right, they hinted at Thanos, but they never really showed him until Age, oh, of, yeah. uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah. Because yeah. we got hinted at like in Avengers, success who mm -hmm. he was talking to. We know that Kang now is the big bad, as far as we know. Yeah. And like. So who is that? Like that? I don't want to. I do. I think, just don't want to spoil it. I do <laughs> think that the questions we have may be answered in Eternals. Oh my gosh, that's another one I'm excited for. Mm -hmm. Oh, and guess what? The director is Asian. Let's go. So it's, let's go. Okay, yeah. So you mentioned that you're looking forward to Spider-Man. I am looking for Spider-Man and Eternals. But what one? So I, there is a very strong possibility that Spider-Man may be pushed back due to the COVID. Oh, man, that's going to suck. But if you had the option to pick one or the other, what would it be? Probably Eternals, because I feel like that's going to play a... I mean, I know that Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man, but then the Eternals are there, like... They're another, like, obscure... Like, no, got, not, not a whole lot whole, of... I got the whole 12 issues right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you're a softcore guy like me, right? No. Uh, in terms of comics, well, you, you don't really know about the Eternals. That's why I'm excited about uh, the Eternals more so than Spider-Man. Even though I am super excited about Spider-Man. So yeah. honestly, and if you look at Eternals, right? I mean, Shang Chi has probably about two hundred plus issues out total, right? Mm -hmm. Eternals doesn't even hit thirty. Like mm -hmm. that's a twelve issue arc there. You have another twelve issue arc down here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really. They don't really have much mm. so and I do think like I, I didn't watch did you watch uh, No Man Land I started it but I fell asleep I was on a I was on an airplane ride to Hawaii no. and it's to me I, I know it won best picture right Chloe's best picture out. best director yeah so she is awesome and she makes me proud to be Asian but like the the screen on on you know the Delta airline there, it's just very small and it's kind of dim, so uh, pussy I, to sleep. I kind of fell asleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nora's been talking about wanting to watch. It's on Hulu now. Oh, it is. Okay. And nice. I have Hulu. So when we watched, the, when we seen the original trailer, the first trailer for Eternals, and we saw one of the characters walking the beach almost. Mm -hmm. It was like you know that this film's gonna have the best cinematography. It looks beautiful again. And I, I Shang Chi. So yeah, Shang Chi was gorgeous. Yeah. beautifully shot. Um, like I said, I'm gonna say it again. Like Destin did his, he did his freaking homework on it. I want to know what the cinematographer is of that film. The cinematographer is oh, incredible. Yeah, too. it was beautiful. And then back to Eternals with Chloe Zhao. Like that looks even more gorgeous. Um, 
and also they have a lot of Game of, Game of Thrones actors a in there. Lot. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, heck yeah, there we go. Well, then you got to <laughs> me that Clark's gonna be in Secret Invasion. So. Oh, okay. The yeah. new Disney Plus show coming out. Cool. So cool. yeah, GOT is gonna become the MCU pretty soon. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. But uh. And they have what's her name? I, I'm. Probably mispronouncing your name again, like G- Gemma or Gemma Chan? Gemma Chan. Gemma Chan. Yeah. Who was in Captain Marvel? She was in Captain Marvel. She was in Captain Marvel. She played one of the Krees. What? Yeah, she was in all the makeup, and she did such. Oh wait, but she's playing a different character. Yes, she's playing oh, a different character because okay, okay, I think okay. Kevin Feige felt really bad that her character didn't get much screen time. Okay. And like, she's a real actress. Like, I mean, I I can't recall what I've seen her in, but I know I've seen her. So. To me, she's like the, she looks like the, she's like the Asian Jennifer Lawrence to me. <laughs> oh, then again, Jennifer Lawrence has one a shit ton of calories. So. Yeah. Well, no, I, I like, Jennifer Lawrence, I, I like her. She's a great actress. And I don't know too much about Gemma Chan. Is that how you say her name? Yeah, let's see what she's in. Gemma Chan, no. besides um, Crazy Rich Asian. But. So, I have to admit, and I just think this is because I'm not a romantic you know, rom com type of person. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of Creed Rich Asians. I'm kind of the opposite. Well, I'm not a huge fan of rom com, so I went into that movie with very low expectations, and then it just blew my low expectations out the so, roof. So <laughs> Nora loved it. Yeah, and I actually enjoyed it. I was like, yeah, I'm not a huge like I said, mm-hmm. like rom com, nah. But I was like, wow, this movie is actually pretty good. But I heard from some of the hardcore readers from the book that the movie didn't do the book justice, which is usually the case. That's right? usually the case. That's it, yeah. So I'm looking at what Gemma Chan has been in. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots, that's where I was never in the Crazy Rich, Asian. Crazy Rich Asians. She was also in Transformers. She was? Uh, probably last s- night. Probably small, supporting yeah. role. Yeah. Nothing too huge that I know of. Fantastic Beast. So. Okay. But she has a good catalog of films, and I'm really hoping that Eternals can push it same as like uh, Simu because Simu was phenomenal oh yeah and he literally came out of nowhere if you didn't watch Kim, Kim's, Kim's Convenience Kim's Convenience yeah, yeah. Like, so. he, he well, I just got to, before he came over I was watching an interview that he did on ESPN and before he even got into acting he was an accountant and he got fired oh and he dang. didn't know what his life was going to be <laughs> And now the dude is on every poster you look at outside. <laughs> dude, his life has changed, and he deserved it. You know, he des- he deserved it. That's he's he's great. He's awesome. Uh, perfect for the role. Perfect casting. When they casted him, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't too sure about it because I was like, this guy is from Kim's Convenience. Like, does he have like martial arts skills? And then I found out that he was a stuntman, and he did do some martial arts. I was like, okay, here we go. And then he spoke Chinese too, so that's. That's huge too, because it is a Chinese character. And that's the one thing I did like about Shang Chi that they, they spoke, of, was it? It wasn't the same language, right? Because there was like different dialects, was it? Uh, it was Chinese. Yeah, it was Chinese. Because, I don't know if it was Mandarin and Cantonese, but because I because uh, Katie, because when Katie goes to Taiwan, she does not know how to speak Chinese, yeah. and yet her family does. Oh you remember yeah. That scene like in the beginning yeah. of the movie, her family's speaking Chinese, but mm-hmm. she's not. So she's like your. She's 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 kind of relatable to me in a way because yeah. my parents they speak Hmong, and then I grew up speaking Hmong, but like my Hmong is not like, um, it's not very good. Like well, that's it's, why that's why I was questioning because like her family was speaking, but then when she went to Talao, she didn't know the language. Yeah. So I'm like, is there different dialects here that we don't know about because. She makes a comment earlier in the film that he's going by Sean at that time. Yeah. Sean knows four different languages. Mm-hmm. So I'm oh, yeah, her friend. Yeah, yeah. Her, when they were, yeah. So that, that was awesome. But yeah, like, I totally understand um, that Aquafina's character isn't really good in her native tongue. Because mm-hmm. to me, when I speak Hmong to, to my elders, it's like, it feels like uh, they're looking at me like how I look at them when they're trying to speak English to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like couple phrases couple Broken. words yeah. yeah so they're like okay <laughs> I, I remember being at some events with you and your brothers and I was like uh, what was that <laughs> yeah so yeah and like like you said we've known each other for 16 years so mm-hmm. I've been a, I've had some exposure to the community yeah more I mean I just think like uh, while watching Shang-Chi though I just I can relate to some of it because I you know growing up is you 
Mm-hmm. Like, and I could just imagine like how much uh, while I was watching, I was like, "This is what Kang's probably wanted since the MCU." Yes, I I never had this growing up, and like I said, you know, I was and when uh, the first Avengers came out, I was like, "Dude, I wish there was an Asian face up there." Like, we never get it, we never get this, and then, well, we may. Well, have I don't I don't want to say never, but we rarely, very rarely. Namor yeah. may be represented as uh, Asian too. Oh, is he? I, yeah. You know, I saw an article a couple months ago where they casted a, a... Now, you guys can correct me on this, but the, I think he's Mexican. I think he's, yeah. he's... They casted a Mexican actor to play Namor. So I don't think they're going to Asia. Well, nothing's been confirmed yet. Oh, it hasn't been confirmed? No. Oh, okay. Because that, that is... It. If you're a comic book fan, Namor is one of those characters that was one of the original characters. So once that gets casted, you're gonna just be seeing it nonstop. And okay. I do know who you're talking about. Um, I don't know if he was. I think he was in Narcos. Yeah, 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 he was. And like it would be, it would have been a great casting. It's just one of those things where this is is it like a rumor article that I read. Yeah. Probably. There's a lot of rumors. You know, the Marvel like they do such a good job of hiding stuff. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, and look at the cameos. Just the cameos in general. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, they, the, back to the mid credit scene. mid credit scene and even... Uh, I mean, you see in the trailer, Abomination in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Watch the design yeah. of Abomination is way better than the original. Yeah, he's more uh, comic book accurate. Comic book accurate, yeah. more menacing because one... Uh, I wonder what's going on in that scene. Like, again, I, I don't want to have any spoilers, but I wonder what's going on. Because there's something going on there. Yeah, because when... when Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna stop talking. But well, yeah. if you've seen the trailer, you know that Wong fights abomination. abomination. Yeah, but what happens after? Yeah, that there's is, something that happens afterwards. They start questioning. And it's like, what's going on? And Wong is quickly becoming one of my favorite MCU characters. Do you know it's funny? Nora said that too while watching the movie. Oh really? She's like, yeah. I love Wong. Wong is sauce. I want to go karaoke with him. Wink, oh, wink, and, uh, wink, wink. <laughs> well, that and plus, like, I was laughing so hard. Uh, when they went karaoke because I'm like oh my god I remember being invited to karaoke like, before uh, yes I were, just I, I love the Asian like representation in that in the karaoke and you know do you, do you remember being part of the Asian Diversity Club at yes. Everett Hills we were in karaoke yeah. we got drunk <laughs> Yeah, I was a part of Asian Diversity Club. <laughs> he was. And International Club. And Ethiopian. <laughs> Ethiopian, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to the MCU being more diverse. Yep, um, totally. Dude, the more diverse it is, the more stories you can tell. And the more people you can draw in. Yes, the more people you can draw in. It's not, like, a repetitive story over and over and, and over. And you could argue that the MCU was getting a little stale. Because, you know... You, you get introduced to new characters, but new characters had the same mm-hmm. story arc. Mm-hmm. Where Shang Chi, Black Panther, Miss Marvel coming out, mm-hmm. they were gonna have they're going to have different card shows which didn't cause different story arcs that yes. we've never seen before. Because Miss Marvel, I, I think that's one of the greatest characters because of the fact she's so much into her culture that that's a whole book about that. Mm-hmm. So and I've seen the stills, so mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Kate Bishop. Coming in Hawkeye, oh, so yeah. you get a female Hawkeye family. That's a uh, that's gonna be uh, Disney Plus. Yep, Plus Sans, Sans Sans Mar- okay. Miss Marvel. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a day sh- like okay, so we've seen Bru- I'm not gonna we've seen Bruce Banner basically run the courts and uh, you know, talk right, dude. So, so Amadeus Cho could come in. Yes. Yeah. So are they are they uh, are there talks about that young coming? Well, this talk- TV, uh, like a Disney Plus series or a movie. Well, you got She Hawk coming on. So you, they might introduce him in there. Because mm, oh. Abomination's been rumored to be in She Hawk. Yeah. So yeah. Tim so, Roth, right? Yeah. Tim Roth. Belowski. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, they're looking at what looking at the future of the MCU. You, you get excited, and I remember watching Endgame because I think. You and I seen Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember sitting at Applebee's in complete silence afterwards. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Awesome, uh, awesome. But I said that the End Game was seriously the end of Marvel because, like, how do you top that? It's gonna be hard. I hope they do uh, this whole multi- multiverse and Kang uh, storyline right. But what's what's that saying? In Feige, we trust or whatever. In Feige, we trust. Feige, we trust. I, so far, he has not failed us. Even so. and even when there's a spump in the road, even if it's just yeah. an okay film, because. I don't think the Spider-Man movies are the greatest. 
I love Tom Holland as Spider Man. Oh, you didn't like Homecoming or Far From Home? Uh, there was just something like you could tell that the Sony and Marvel like they they're not exactly on the same page. Uh, that sucks. That sucks that there's something like that. I did like Homecoming more than uh, Far From Home. I have to agree. I mean, I did yeah. like Mysterio, but I thought Keaton was great as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, they're bringing in all these characters that you know. Like, once we get the X Men, once we get Fantastic Four. I think number three, um, Spider Man, number three is gonna top Homecoming think, and Far From Home. Just because I think, yeah, Doctor Strange and Paul, I mean, bringing him back, yeah, Alfred Molina, who is the greatest Superman villain. Yeah, I'm excited to see him villain, back. So. Oh, Rumors you, of the Green Goblin coming oh, back. Oh, you got the pumpkin and, bomb in it. Oh, they showed it in the trailer? Yeah, they showed the pumpkin bomb mm, in the trailer. Okay. Uh, I, I know for sure Jamie Foxx. Jamie right? Foxx is a lecture. That's been confirmed. Uh, if you look closely, because there's been a lot of rumors, if you look very closely at the trailer, you can see Sandman. Thomas oh. and Church. Yeah, what's his name? Uh... Well, Sandman is the character's name, but the, the actor that played Thomas him. Hayden Church. Okay, he actually was uh, one of my favorite characters growing up as a kid, or yeah. actors, because he was kind of goofy and funny. But... Sideways, the movie Sideways, and oh, did you see yeah. Hellboy yet? Uh, the, was he in Hellboy? The most recent one. Oh, uh, yes, actually, he I was did. Lobster Johnson. Oh, that was him. Yeah, cool. I gotta rewatch that movie. He's the best part of the movie. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought the movie was okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta rewatch it. We, yeah. The thing about Hellboy is that they took way too many story arcs and crammed into one film. Yeah. But yeah, the future of Marvel MCU is gonna be great. Yes, ending st ending statements or yeah. Uh, if you got anything, last things you want to say about the MCU, or if you want to plug your blog, if you've been. Oh yeah, I have a blog. It's it's called Kang Ponders, but I haven't been on there for a while because I've been so busy teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 a teacher, so um, hopefully my kids don't find this because I did swear once or twice. But uh, yeah, it's called Kang Ponders. I just blog about a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of what's been going on like socially uh, right now with like you know BLM. Mm -hmm. um, you know the Asian hate crime, and also talk about like Asian representation, which is why this movie was so so awesome. It's honestly historical for me. I don't know if it's gonna be historical for all Asian people. Um, I know I got some flack in China, Who's but that that's a different perspective because they're not Asian Americans here. They're they're Chinese over there. They maybe some of them do understand what we're going through over here because we don't see ourselves on TV a lot. I know they see themselves a lot on TV because they don't have you know to do. That, that problem not saying they don't have problems over there but I mean they do but like I'm, I mean I'm yeah. going on and on but like this movie Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings is awesome my nephews said that this is their most favorite Marvel superhero movie yet that this makes me their favorite character too yep and their favorite character and that makes me so happy to see like my eyes got like watery I'm like yes and I was like I wish I was your age right now because I could be feeling that too and yeah. I am feeling that but like as a kid growing up to see yourself on screen in, in that magnitude like Marvel like people are gonna go see Marvel movies whether it sucks or not people are gonna go and they're gonna see this representation it's awesome and it's not your yeah he's like a kung fu guy right that's like the stereotype uh, but he's he's more than that it's layered so the thing about Shang-Chi is that he he's an expert with every type of martial arts mm -hmm. um, but yeah going off that uh, the kids I think this movie is great for kids too. the mm -hmm. visuals um, you know, Norris working at the comic shop now. We could get you guys some uh, Shang Chi comics for the nephew. Oh yes, dude! So, That'd be so awesome. Yeah, we yeah. can do that for you. Um, I'm always wanting like the new. This is like every generation does this. Like we want the the new generation to have what we didn't, didn't have. Yeah. You know, and that's what I want my nephews to have more Asian representation. Like, let's go. You yeah. Know? And I'm all for growing the comic community. So if I can get your nephews in the uh, community, then yo, get I'm them in, get, get them, them in. in. Yeah, I'll but, say it's from you. Like, kind of so, awesome. But, but yeah, to uh, you know the typical thing: leave a like, comment. What? Well, well, how? If you've watched Shang Chi, did you like it? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, Kyle's in <laughs> segment. My one negative about the movie. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Is Death Dealer? How he was mis How he was misused. I don't know if it was misused because, like you said, the comp. I just learned about this today. Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot of issues on Shang Chi, so I don't know if it was misused or not. But I wanted to see more of him because in the trailer he looks so badass, well, and I wanted more. Like he's I was not like, in the comics much. He's not in the comics yeah. much. I wanted. More, I wanted to see more from Death Dealer. Um, 
He's the he's the right hand man of Wenwu. Uh, I mean, we already got one badass villain in Shang Chi Wenwu, so I I can see they don't want to spoil us with another badass villain. So, it, but I did want to see more from Death Dealer. And you do question if he's a villain at all, Tilo. Yeah, that's so, true. You do question if Wenwu is, is that a is villain, honestly like, the, that is the best villains right there. If you yeah. can question, if you can actually relate to them and like feel mm -hmm. sympathy, it's like mm -hmm. you want to hate the guy, and then midway through the movie, like. Coming from. Yeah, actually, like they make you. I mean, how I saw the movie was that oh gosh, he's this bad villain, and then, and then you just kind of start to like him, and, he, and then and then he falls in love, and then and then you can you can see why he did the things he did in the movie. All right, so oh. going off of the only one negative point, I mean that's good when you have one negative point for the whole movie. Yeah, and it, I mean. It doesn't have to be negative, but I mean, I guess it is. Well, negative, no, yeah. no movie's perfect. So. Yeah, no movie is perfect. So uh, besides Spider Man Two, uh, <laughs> and Into the Spider Verse. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> That's actually a really good. One. I yeah, love Into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Much can continue to talk of diversity if they ever bring Miles in. Yes, so, let's do it. Let's and do it. We got Daniel Glover. He's already he's, he's a, already technically in the and universe. And he becomes the Prowler. Yeah, his character becomes a bad yeah. guy. So, but uh, off of that uh, discussion of diversity and why Shang Chi is. One of the more important films in the MCU. Go watch it, everyone. It's so good. If, yeah, if your seals, so yeah, if, it all depends if your seals open. Yeah. Though. right. That's now, true. I yeah. know it, uh, it kind of sucks right now yeah. that the COVID has been uh -huh. a pain in the ass. Even if you stream it illegally, huh. go and buy it too. Buy it's, a ticket yeah, at least. <laughs> it, yeah, it's cool. awesome. It's so awesome, and uh, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing more I can say. It's beautiful. It's awesome. The it, the so culture is res well respected. Like, have you had a reaction to this to any movie? Anyway, like, uh, uh, so you watching this? Have you ever had a reaction like you just had talking about the movie? <laughs> I did have similar reactions to how I reacted to Shang Chi, but like not as strong because obviously this is historical yeah. for us. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, find his blog. His blog is awesome.